but how's everything brother busy staying busy yeah it's it's been going good just been in dev mode for the last i don't know three ish months four months so just head down dev mode trying to figure out how to uh, how to build scale and run a SaaS company essentially like yeah it's a, a whole new you know it's some things are similar to past projects and and endeavors and and some things are completely new and uh you know quite a quite a learning process but it's been a ton of fun and uh, 2024 is looking looking bright it's great to hear is there any game changing updates since these custom gpts came out or anything like that so we we did add gpt4 turbo that was that was the big update that essentially allowed us to drop the cost of the credits for a lot of users, which was nice. But essentially the the big two features that helped us reach a better version of product market fit. I've been reading this book called Product Onboarding, I think by Wes Bush. And it's, it's really interesting. Basically they talk about how like most companies go through a very, very similar cycle, wh whether they're funded or they're bootstrapped or whatever, they go through a cycle of finding product market fit. So it's not like a like a black and white thing. It's more of a, like a, like a scale or whatever. And so mm -hmm. the, and, and they show a bunch of different graphs. They're like, yeah, this company started out and it's like a, you know, a normal linear growth scale. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh yeah, we, we did some change or we did something. And, and what's interesting is they, they've interviewed a ton of, a ton of founders, people from like intercom voice flow are all from in this book. And they're like, yeah, we don't really know what we did. But then all of a sudden it goes from, you know, like this to then like this. And then that's when they're like, yeah, we, we found a better version of product market fit, which allowed the app to scale. And, and the, the saying or whatever they, they put in that book is it, you go from struggling to get clients and getting customers to struggling to keep up with new customers and keeping up with demand. Uh, that that's interesting. Is there uh is there any niches you didn't expect um, businesses needing that that custom chatbots? I think it's evolved. So in, in the very beginning, it was all the chatbots. How do we do customer service? Oh, the, the, the quote unquote magic of being able to upload your data and then it knowing everything about your data. Like that's really cool, but that was very quickly commoditized to pretty much every single product out there where the advantages I think came were within the specific use cases that businesses want. And at the time, no one really knew what that use case actually was. And over the last few months of interviewing a few hundred different founders or, or agency owners, we've all collectively kind of realized what those use cases are and it's lead generation and calendar booking, like appointment setting. So if you can have an AI that can churn through leads and, and do data extraction and collection and qualification and potentially even book them automatically to a meeting like that replaces a lot of man hours that you, a business could be potentially paying for that could be reduced by an AI agency that then has a way to, you know, kind of get their foot in the door to then upsell for, for additional revenue. Got you. Is, are you still funneling the only source of marketing is, is organically through your channel? Or are you guys experimenting with like some new, some new sort of marketing? Yeah. So the, the, what's interesting is the, the platforms that we probably are all familiar with, like Futurepedia mm -hmm. are starting to pay off. So like those listings that we did and very early on that, you know, kind of knowing like, oh, where are the places that people are going to look for these types of tools? Well, that's one of the major places that people go to look to find the tools. And that's, you know, that's like the places that both you and I have promoted in the past, just because that's the best place to go. Like, yeah. so investing in optimizing that listing was a, definitely a good idea. I think we even paid for it. And then we just now started doing paid ads because we've started to get traction from other users and other creators organically. So I, you know, I continue to promote it in certain ways or certain levels, but then other creators have just now started realizing how good of a platform it actually is to then start organically promoting it. Like they do with something like a futurepedia because it is, you know, I'm a little biased, but it is the best platform out there. Yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> it's definitely something I, I'm ironically, we're, we're actually me and my team, we're building a, a, a directory ourselves 
nice. for SaaS tool, for SaaS tools and AI tools. We're going to get like a bunch of creators promoting it and, and so forth. So it'd be awesome to have a, to have a stammer on there. Definitely. Yeah. Do you have an, is it like out? Do you have a name for it yet or so? Working? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's called escape. Escape. Okay. Yeah. So S A A S C A P E. And uh, so yeah, no, no, we're, we're, no double S. No double S. Yeah. Okay. Yep. yep. S, um, sascape.ai. And yeah, like, like I said, we're, we're just going to have a, what, what's really going to put us apart. And, and what I got planned is there's a bunch of AI tools out there. Um, that I've been being sent from friends of mine and, and, and part of my network where they're like gray hat tools, where it's not necessarily, mm -hmm. let's say, you know, heavily promoted and, and, and so forth. For example, there's, there's one out there, I forgot the name, but they help you, you know, how TikTok has an algorithm where you can't repost videos, existing videos, otherwise it won't get pushed to the algorithm. Mm -hmm. So what, what this tool is doing, and maybe I can, I can bring it up here is it's changing the video um, to the exact percent. So I guess TikTok, the video needs to be around, I think 60 to 80% different from that existing video to okay. actually be considered a unique video. And what this tool is doing, I found it right here. Let me send it over to you. What this tool is doing is automatically changing um, the required percentage of that video to, to make it a unique video. So it can go, could get pushed out mm. onto TikTok again and then go viral once again. So let me, let me send it to you right here. That's interesting. Yeah. You might watch that the founder he's on YouTube. He's, I heard he's well known was well, somewhat well known in the space. His name is Nafe Austin. Not sure if you heard of him. Awesome. So fansgrowth.io. So he made this, so he runs an OnlyFans agency and he made this originally <laughs> to help his clients grow. And uh -huh. he turned it into an AI tool that can work on any type of video now. So was planning to list a bunch of these tools that are kind of like gray hat, not necessarily like the normal tools mm -hmm. and want a, a nice section of those tools where people can explore, you know, these mm. unique tools made by AI. I feel like nobody else is doing doing something like that, you know? Well, you should tell this guy to work on his website. There's there's some there's some placeholder text here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, nah, yeah, definitely need some work. I, I don't know the guy or anything, but I, I was sent oh, okay. I was sent it over. I watched the video and, and it was it was mm. pretty cool how he was he was using AI and, and changing the changing the videos and they do it by I guess face swap and some other stuff. I don't know. Interesting. But I thought it was interesting. Well, you've been doing, really you've been a, you've been doing a ton of stuff in that space, right? The, the faceless videos, the AI generated content at scale. I mean, I think the last time we talked, you were, you were just coming off that last big viral, that viral video that you had. I think that was showcasing that it was like, you know, here's how you do the faceless. I mean, how, what, what, how did that video end, end up? So I, are you referring to the one where it's like a call to action? Maybe. To... I mean, I, I just remember like you were, you were on a, on a tear in terms of engagement on Instagram going, you were at like, I want to say like, I don't know, like one thirty or something. And then you ripped to like one, two fifty, two eighty. I'm not, I'm not sure which video exactly it was, but yeah. Yeah. We're at two fifty one right now. Been utilizing a lot of collaboration posts. Mm -hmm with some bigger accounts that I got the pleasure to hop on calls with and, and create a connection there. I feel like collaboration posts, it's, it's a, is a really strong feature where we're taking advantage of it now with what we're doing now. Mm -hmm. We're pretty much doing like influencer marketing for these AI tools, but with a spin on it, where it's, I, I do a video about the tools, but I also find an account that let's say fits their, their, the audience they're going for now mm -hmm. create the video and I'll do the collab video, the collab collaboration post with that set account. Mm -hmm. So we've been finding su success there, but there is some, I, I feel like collaboration posts decreases the like profile visits. I'd say mm -hmm. I, I I've been seeing a, 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 a slower growth on the following side since I've been doing it. 
it helps with the views and so and, and, and sorts, but with the following, we I, I've seen it going down. Maybe it's because the video, the people watching the video maybe doesn't know who the account is coming from, who the video is coming from, from, from what I'm looking at it. Because when you post a collaborative video, both of the uh, accounts or all three or four or five are like the same size. So there's no differentiating factor on who posts it. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's why. Yeah. But uh, that's interesting. Do you, do you see that being something that will continue to be successful moving into 2024? Like how I wouldn't say leeching an audience, but like you're, 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 you're getting exposed to that other creator's audience that you could then maybe, I don't know, like hope to get with another single, you know, singular video, maybe. I do think it's, I think it's a great option if you don't care about follower growth, because I've, I've, it's still, it's, it's been increasing our, our conversions and like click through rates a lot. It doesn't affect that because you're, you're touching a, a, a different audience point, you know? So it's, it's more views, more people commenting the keyword. If you have a call to action like that. Mm -hmm. So it's still liable just as, as long as you don't really care about like your follower growth per se, it's, it's still a great option. I I'm, I'm still leveraging it. We, we have like strategic deals with these accounts also where, where it's beneficial on both sides, not just one side. So it, it I, I do think it's, it's still liable. It's still a liable option. Definitely. Yeah. It's still, it's pretty wild how many accounts started using that DM automation sequence strategy. I mean, there was a few, I think when we started talking about it, like a while back, maybe that was like six months ago, maybe, or, or even further, it seems like that's the, that's the default strategy now to, for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. I, I see all the big accounts doing it now and yeah. you were, you were the first one to do it. <laughs> one of the first ones. To I would, do it, yeah, I would, I would say that, but yeah, I'd, I'd like to think I was, I mean, at least in terms of t talking about it, I think a lot of people had it implemented. I know Stephen Malore, there's a couple of accounts that had it that were, that are always early on this stuff, but yeah, share it, sharing that. I think, I mean, it, it just works. Like, you know, I, I'm just, I'm happy that more and more accounts started using it because it, it just works. Like, and now tying that into the AI stuff is pretty wild. So instead of having that, that simulation of a conversation that you're implementing with ManyChat, like having ManyChat just send that initial sequence or that, that secondary message to then have the automation follow up with is where this kind of goes pretty, pretty nuclear, to be honest. Yeah. I, I've, I've been, I've seen some some videos and some examples of some pretty crazy, some, some deep automations with many chat. Cause I mm -hmm. guess they implemented the GPT turbo as well. Mm -hmm. And now you can even customize the, the feedback even more. Have you experimented uh, with, with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, the, what's interesting is the platforms that were built ground up for programmatic chatbots are now trying to all add in conversational functionality which is fundamentally different than programmatic. So it's like they had to figure out and they're currently figuring out how do we integrate this into our existing platform to make it make sense for our users. And it still has to be done within this kind of spider web flow. So like in many chat, you have to do this, you know, then you create a connection point and it goes off. And eventually you get to a point where it creates this like massive spider web flow, which at scale, they tend to break and they tend to fail, not because of GPT or OpenAI, but because the infrastructure around it that allows that functionality to happen in the first place. And that's fundamentally different than a platform that's built from the ground up to offer the conversational piece. So what's interesting is when you combine the two to take the advantages of both, you use a platform like ManyChat, Zapier, GHL, whatever it, ha whatever it may be, to set up the systematic programmatic part of the funnel or the, the automation sequence. And then when a user responds to initiate that conversation, the AI can then take over and have the conversation to do the lead generation or the calendar booking feature. Yeah, no, yeah, that, that's for sure. It's uh, yeah, it's getting crazy. And I, I think this is only the beginning on, on what's to come. <laughs> we, we actually uh, have a, where they, it sounds similar to what you mentioned earlier, where they, they, they come in and it's, they nurture your, your leads and their main goal is to book calls, to get book calls. 
And we were having a, a bit of trouble trying to figure out how to bring in clients for these guys because we were marketing for them. And like you said, their main audience was like coaches and so forth. So mm -hmm. what we've been experimenting is like tapping into newsletters specifically like for coaching and, and appointment setting and so forth. So we're just starting to tap into their scene and, and hopefully do a bit better um, because it is a specific niche and, and, you know, sometimes audiences don't resonate well with, with that specific. That's why I wanted to ask you, like, what, what are some, some ways you, you know, some unique marketing ways you were, you guys were going about it. Cause I, I remember from the last time we spoke, you said uh, you were just doing organic at the time, but now you're, mm -hmm. you guys are like tapping into ads and, and, and so forth. Yeah. Cause it, it's expanded beyond my, my reach. So like I can, I can leverage the audience that I'm capturing with my organic content that is in no way and related to stammer but it's, and it's related to people that are interested in AI. And that's the key is like, I'm making content that's not about my product and service. It's about the stuff around my people, you know, my audience could be interested in, or my, my customer base might be interested in. So it's like, Oh, what are, what's a cool AI tool for video editing or whatever it may be. And then now that they're captured inside that audience, then I can now retarget them with an ad that is specific to stammer to see if they're interested in opting in, if they haven't opted in already. Yeah. So figuring out kind of that type of funnel is where we're at right now to figure out where, where our money is going to be best spent after, you know, and it's all built on top of the organic. I think that's, that's, what's so important is built, you know, building that foundation to where we don't have to spend money on those on that, on the foundation. And I think that's where so much money in marketing spend for other companies is, is held. I mean, I think that's probably one of the be the biggest competitive advantages that we have is just that that audience that I've generated over the last couple of years. Yeah, personal brand could be could be super powerful. Are are you guys implementing or going to implement like workshops and and webinars? Is that a funnel you see? Yeah, yeah. We just we just started one. We did our first one yesterday, actually. So for for agency users, we launched a Discord, and everyone that's you know free users can can join as well. And we did the first one yesterday where it talks, where I basically just wanted to showcase and talk about all the other stuff that agency owners typically struggle with, or they have questions about, you know, everything from marketing, cold email, building a website, funnel, pipeline, all this stuff. It can be, a, you know, a little overwhelming if you're doing it yourself. So mm -hmm. I, was, I was trying to figure out like, okay, a lot of our customers are newer to this, you know, agency space. And a lot of them are struggling with getting that, you know, going from the zero to the one, going from nothing to something and getting that first client. And my intention was try to create tutorials that help get that process done. So that way they can then become a Stammer AI subscriber. Mm -hmm. And I mean, so far it went pretty good. I think, I think people en enjoyed the content yesterday we talked about. I mean, kind of similar stuff to what, what you and I have done over the last couple of years, setting yourself up as an authority figure in the space, providing value, 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 value. And if you want to take action or if you want to, you know, if you want to go down that route, you can, but we're never, at least I'm, you know, my intention is never to switch it to go sell, sell, sell. It's always going to be value. It's going to, it's never ending value, 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 value. Yeah. The Alex Harmozy route. Well, he was watching the video yeah. this morning. He, he was mentioning that just. Value, value, value until, until they ask you, you know, yeah, they and, ask for more. And that DM strategy aligns with that. And I think we, we were doing that before he even made that video. We just didn't realize that that was a way that we could structure that sentence. And, mm -hmm. and with Gumroad too, I think Gumroad is, I was talking to somebody yesterday about this, like Gumroad is one of those sneaky platforms where it allows you to do like a lead qualification step without doing another step. Like seeing when somebody donates money for something that's free is one of the most powerful like lead qualification steps that I don't, you know, no one talks about. That's true. They're a hot buyer for, you know, like, so yeah, yeah it's interesting. I don't know. I don't know why I brought that up, but no, it makes sense. It makes yeah. sense. And that's, that's something I, I, I haven't even thought about 
yeah, there's, there's been, there's been instances where I had some free guys and, and, and people put money towards them. So maybe they're, maybe they're ready for the next step in the funnel. You know? I mean, yeah. And I think that's, that's the advantage of trying to leverage AI in certain ways that you can churn through these leads without you having to do it all manually. So it's like, oh yeah, wouldn't it be great if I could follow up with that? Like, yeah. So I think that's where th that's where this starts to become really fun. Now that the platform is built, we can start to find fun, interesting use cases like this to then leverage the platforms at our disposal to generate more revenue for us and our clients. Yeah, no, that's for sure. Yeah. Is have you have you started on Twitter yet? Mm -hmm. Like your personal brand? Yep. So during the whole open AI, Sam Altman firing, hiring saga, right before Thanksgiving, uh -huh. I did a whole, so I got away from Ecom Ross and I'm now just my name, Ross Flutterjohn, mm -hmm. and started going on Twitter and X more. Whether I like that or not is to, is, uh, to be seen, but yeah, just trying to be visible on, on more platforms. What about you? Yeah, no, I've, I've, I've been. I've been using X X for for a little bit now, trying to trying to grow that personal brand on there. Thinking about doing the whole building public type thing. That's what I was going to ask you about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, definitely something I see uh, a lot of people doing, and it works out for them. I feel like in in your case, it would work out great. Um, mm -hmm. Are you are you planning to do that? Probably. Yeah, I think after the holidays, we're gonna do a product hunt, hacker news, indie hacker kind of PR push, mm -hmm. um, which I think will be good. I don't, I mean, I don't really, to me, build in public is all about like showcasing your revenue and like, oh, we just, you know, got, but like, I don't know if I really want to do that. I would more, I like my intention is, or is to like showcase the success of the agencies, not necessarily the success of the platform. I don't know yeah. if that's wrong or not, but I don't know. What do you think about that? I've seen it go. I've seen it go both ways. I, I've yeah. seen guys do build in public where, where they're showing the revenue and, and, and showing all that. But I've seen a lot of success with guys that they don't even show revenue, but they show like the process, the, some of the back end, maybe some game changer, uh, update that, that they're doing or, or like a, for instance, when chat GPT turbo came out, how it affected their business. Mm -hmm. There's a, there's a huge pocket on Twitter that, that that's interested in something like that. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think you need to show your revenue to do well there. That's a good point. I, I, I feel like if, if, if you came in and, and talked about maybe some, some backend stuff on, on how, how everything is, 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 is moving and how, ChatGPT is, is implementing, you know, with the new updates and stuff. I think you'll find a lot of success in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I could start by doing like, here's what we did this week or something. Yeah. Just sharing, just sharing more of kind of what's going on. I've been wanting to do that with YouTube. My, my whole intention for this year. I mean, I think we talked about this at the beginning of the year. It was like you, you know, going hard on YouTube, trying to get to monetization, not with, you know, with no intention of starting or running a SaaS company at the time. But now that that that's, you know, underway. YouTube is definitely one, I think my main focus for, for 2024, for, um, you know, various reasons, but what for 2024, what is your number one platform that you're looking for or towards? I'd say Twitter and YouTube are some big ones. And that's because well, we both know YouTube is like the best with just with like audience relationship and, and, you know, a lot of opportunities can come through, through YouTube and. Mm -hmm. long form, you know, it, it's the hardest to crack, but it's the hardest to crack for, for a reason. It's probably got the most value out, out of all of them. I'd say Twitter is number two is, is the second one. And I'll tell you why Instagram. So I, I kind of gave, gave up on TikTok after my TikTok got banned. I, I'm not sure if I, if I mentioned it, but I, I had a didn't. large TikTok and, and, uh, it got banned. I don't even know why I'm still trying to get it back from uh, a lot of various ways, <laughs> yep. unique ways, but with 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 Twitter, I, I can scale content like it, writing writing threads and and tweets. I can do that without recording. You know, with Instagram, I I I need to record and so forth. Now it's I'd say it's a lot easier or a lot more efficient when you're when you're doing like podcasts or just hopping on a bunch of calls. That's the that's that's the way to go about it. Mm. But I haven't really touched on 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 those avenues yet. 
So I'm just creating content, actually getting on a camera for per se, for that specific video, you know, writing out scripts and so forth. But with, with Twitter, I used to not use Twitter for, for the longest. I haven't, I started using Twitter probably last year, the ending of last year. That's when I actually, that was the first time in my life actually using it. And there's, there's a lot of opportunity that, that comes through there. A lot of, a lot of founders and people building, building things are on mm-hmm. Twitter and sometimes they reach out and, and we network. I meet a lot of cool people on there and I feel like just writing it's, it's, it's helped with my copywriting skills as well. My writing skills and just finding cool, cool tools and, and, and cool opportunities. I, I see it all the time on there. I go past the thread that talks about a unique way that somebody's implementing AI into like some unique uh, use case. Mm-hmm. And I, I see that on Twitter a lot. So that's why I, I kind of push it to you because I know you would do well on there. Mm-hmm. With, with with stammer and building in public i i, I think it, there there's a an audience in there for sure yeah do most of the accounts that you see use the hashtag build in public or how, how are they associating themselves with the build in public scene they are mostly like writing threads they write threads on like their journey and like twitter the algorithm has been changing since elon has took over so Video has been getting pushed out a lot, image and video. So you can even repurpose your content onto Twitter and, and it would uh, do well. But most of the time, they're just writing threads on, on, on what they're building. Like I said before, what's changed in their, in their business. They, they don't put hashtags, but in the search feature of Twitter, even the search feature algorithm has changed where it shows based off of like the text within the threads, it doesn't even have to be a, a, a so the re- the related content gets pushed up pretty quickly. So, you know, it's, it's, I would say Twitter is, is one of those easier platforms to go viral, even though it seems like it, like it's not, mm-hmm. it's, it's definitely up there and you don't have to like, let's say warm up an account on Twitter, like on Instagram or, or TikTok, you have to do. TikTok, it's it's a lot easier, but with Instagram, you need to warm it up for a while before the for the algo I actually trust your account. But for Twitter, like it's if you write a good thread and, and the right people see it, you get those read threads, it blows up, you get an influx influx of opportunities, people follow you, you know, and, and you build that relationship. So I do YouTube, YouTube and Twitter are the are are the two one are are the two I'm going for. It's just that YouTube is is hard to crack, man. It's 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 hard to sit down and, and, and really, and really master all the skills you need to, to do well in YouTube, that the title, title, thumbnail, storytelling, you know, mm-hmm. all of that. Yeah. And then it's frustrating. Cause then you see, uh, accounts like the Sam Suliak, Suliak guy. Have you seen his stuff blow up like recently? Yeah. Like, and he's just posting hour long plus raw, essentially raw footage with like, no, you know, no optimization of thumbnail, no. It, it comes back, I think, to that core, the core reason why people are successful in social media is just presence and, and consistency. Like he's showing up every single day. People know that he'll be there. And, you know, and I, and I think in addition to just being a personable per- human, <laughs> I think that goes, goes quite a ways. It's a yeah, personable or on the complete opposite end. Like if you're willing to become the villain on social media and take the, you know, take the alternative route like that will get you the views and and get you the action whether or not that's you know crosses your moral line or not i don't know that's up to you but yeah yeah it's interesting how like from i I kind of fell off on tiktok too to be honest like at mine got i think two strikes or whatever but it was all the it was all these like oh these five websites are illegal to know it was all these like weird videos that then just got clipped or videos that I was making about websites that then got clipped because people thought it was a paid promoted post when it just was a cool website that I found. Like how I'm sure we both originally just started share, like sharing cool stuff, but now it's always like, oh, you were paid. Like, this, you were paid. I'm like, no, this is actually just a cool thing. Like, yeah. I started. To, I stopped doing a lot of brand deals also because of that. I'm saying no to a lot of places because, I mean, so many of them are just shitty. First yeah, off, just a bunch of GPT rappers. Yeah. And, and, and every AI app is a GPT wrapper in some function, but ones that just don't do anything 
beyond just becoming GPT. Like there's no function beyond it or no value add there. Um, and just a lot of sketchy stuff, like a lot of sketchy Chrome extensions. And did you see that meme where it was like when the, when the custom GPTs came out and it was like, um, it was like VCs that just invested into it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it was hilarious. That cracked me up. Yeah. That cracked me up. It is interesting though. Like we we saw a revenue bump when when GPTs were released. And I've been talking with a few people about this. And I think it's because OpenAI and ChatGPT and, uh, as, as a whole is the professor of the AI market. Like they're the ones that are setting the precedent for what the terminology is for certain features or, or certain buttons and things within the interface of chat GPT or creating a G, creating GPTs. And that's influencing the rest of the market. So now that people are aware, like, oh, I can create a GPT quote unquote, or an AI agent essentially that mm-hmm. does a certain, you know, level of, has a certain level of functionality or can follow certain steps. Like, I think that opened people's ideas or, or, or opened their mind to synthetically have the GPT aha epiphany moment where they get it. Like, oh, I understand it now. Now I'm looking for a solution that will do it within my use case. And I think that's that's where that's one of the reasons why I think we saw a bump is because people are like, oh, I understand this, but I don't want to be locked down to it just being on chat GPT. I want to be able to host it on my website or behind my Instagram account or whatever it may be. Interesting. Yeah. No, yeah, that, that does make sense. Another good example of that is the custom instructions. Like that's what they're, that's what open AI and chat GPT call how you create and train a GPT or an AI agent. We have been calling it, you know, for almost a year now, base system prompt. But what we're going to start to do is we're going to have base system prompt. And then in parentheses, we're going to put custom instructions because that's what other people are probably going to be familiar with moving forward rather than some arbitrary name that we're just giving it because of, because just because. Yeah, no, that, that's for sure. It's, it's yeah. Some major updates are coming now. And, and I'm curious is, is, was the no, was the new token limit a big changer for you guys? Not really. So oh. the the update brought in a hundred and I think it was one hundred and twenty eight thousand k limit. Mm-hmm. The average token size, I want to say, is you know like two thousand or something per message. Mm-hmm. So it's not it's not it's not a low amount, but it's not anywhere close to being one hundred ninety two thousand like one hundred ninety eight thousand. Mm-hmm. Where I think it's advantageous, and this is one of the things that a lot of people misread or or. I had to, you know, I had to make sure that I was right on this too, is the, it's only on the input side. The output is still a 4,000, still still limited to a 4,000 tokens. So that's quite interesting. So like you can feed it a book and it can understand a book, but then it can only return, you know, a chapter. And that's, that's really advantageous for our specific use case, because as a conversation continues to happen, the amount of data that can be fed to the AI it increases over time. So if you have a super, super duper long conversation, we can now accommodate that because that context window is hundred is literally like 10 times, you know, or more yeah. than, than what it used to be. Yeah. Yeah. That's for sure. It just has a way longer memory. Now I have, I, I I've got a, I've got a GPT threads that I'm still using for a while now. Back then it was, <laughs> it would forget the, the old command and, and so forth. So yeah, no, that, that that's cool. Mm-hmm. Have you used uh, GPT voice at all yet? I haven't. I have not definitely have to have you. Oh yeah. It's wild. I did a video on it uh, a couple of days ago when I drove down from Thanksgiving or drove down from Vegas to Thanksgiving, I had it read me and walk me through or like a interactive choose your own adventure sci-fi story. Interesting. And it, and it was wild. It blew my mind. And I, the video I made about, about it was essentially going to the point where like, okay, if this is where we're at now, it only lasted about an hour because of the the context or the, the amount of message credits for GPT-4. Wait, so, so it touches VR. 
<laughs> that's where I was going with this. Exactly. I'm like, imagine the Apple Vision Pro where the, like, I think the, whatever, Pika 2, whatever that new thing came out, the text to video. Mm-hmm. Like, imagine if you, if I just say, because that the way it would work is I would, it would be like, okay, well, you know, this happened, this happened. Do you want to put up your ship's, you know, blast shields or do you want to, tell the AI, do you want to tell the ship AI to maneuver, like whatever. And so I could be like, well, I want you to do this, but then, you know, do this, this, and this. And the story would just continue. Now imagine if that was playing out as a scene in front of my eyes, based off of that feedback that I just gave it, we could get into a point where we have, you know, full interactive Pixar level. I mean, in my video, I mentioned Unreal Engine. Like imagine that where it's more lifelike, have you seen of... Ready Player One? Yeah, yeah. I took a clip of that in the in my in my edit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's I, that, that that's clip. exactly where where where, yeah. where it's coming in. Yeah. Yeah. I can see. Yeah, I, I can see it. I can see it coming to this point. Are are you, uh, are you gonna get the Apple the the Vision Pro? When I'm gonna I'll, I'm gonna wait for someone to get it and then I'm gonna try it and see first. Or yeah. I'll go into the store and try it and see for. I want to try it out first. I'm not gonna drop however many 6k however much they are 6k i thought it was that was like 3500 the 35 i totally i don't know i'm not sure i, I totally saw i i was i was looking at all the cyber truck stuff this morning and and saw that they were charging i don't know it's like 100k or something for the the three the three tier yeah yeah for the, for the ultimate one the ultimate like 100K, one okay I, I think it starts off at 70 mm-hmm. it goes mm-hmm. 70 i think 70 90 and then 100 yeah. What are your, what's your take on it? I mean, the design doesn't look too great, but it, it would, it beat a Porsche while, while, while towing a Porsche, it had more, more power than a, what, a, a Ram, some, some, some crazy Ram or something. I think uh-huh. it's worth the money. I mean, if you yeah. look at like the competitors in that niche, like Raptors, and then they're just as expensive. I mean, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. this is a cyber truck. So I, and it, and it's electric. So yeah, no, I, I think it's definitely, I think it's cool. What's your thoughts would, on it? Would you get one? I think so. Yeah? I think so, yeah. <laughs> I, I think I would, honestly. It's, it's, I think so. What about you? Are you a fan of them? No, no chance. No? No chance. <laughs> I it, don't know. It, it's the looks. It the, I, I, like, yeah. it's, look. It, to, to me, in my opinion, it's a look at me vehicle. And I, mm-hmm. that's everything I'm, I'm not. Like I, yeah. I don't want to, I want to be undercover. I don't want people to look at me. I want to be, you know, until I have, you know, some, a yellow McLaren or something like, you know, that's, <laughs> yeah, no, that's, 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 that's different. where I'm, I'm saying that exactly. I get it, but I wouldn't get it like now, like, no, no. but yeah, no, it's definitely, it definitely, yeah. The looks, they need to work on the looks. That's for sure. Yeah. And I'm, I mean, I'm just worried like the build quality of Tesla's in general is debatable and yeah. From the, I watched the MKBHD video review of it this morning, and he goes into detail about how the paneling is so sharp and so like non has no curves essentially. And there's a lot of opportunity for gaps within the, the paneling to be big or small or different or there, not there. So I'm in, in knowing how certain build quality of Tesla's are in the, have been in the past. I, I'm curious to see what the actual production level quality is on this first run when they, when they do an initial release, I'll be watching. That's for sure. Yeah. I won't be, I won't be buying, but I'll be watching. Yeah. You know, yeah, same. What, what do you think about what's happening with Elon and the advertising strike or whatever they got going on? Did you see that clip of him yesterday? Yeah. The go fuck yourself clip. Yeah. You Un- think it's gonna you think it's gonna touch Apple? You, you think Apple's gonna I, I I heard it's like Disney, Apple, a bunch of other platforms. Yeah. I mean, I think if we look at this from like, you know, if we take if we try to take a step back from this, the the two the two like kind of pathways that this could go. And I think he wins there and there's are, are obviously I think arguments for both, but I think he wins in both scenarios. So let's say all advertisers leave the entire platform. Like, what does he really care about money? Like yeah. at the end of the day, he's the richest guy in the world. And I think that's what he meant in that clip. He's like, oh, you're going to blackmail me with money? Like, what are you, are you joking? Yeah. Which is hilarious. 
that's hilarious that he's saying that to Disney, which is like before this last year, I would have not wanted to mess with Disney. And I've had, you know, my dealings with Disney in the past. Shout out. I love you, Disney, but I would not want to mess with Disney. But then this year, you know, they certain decisions that they've made have led me to believe that certain statements like that from Elon are now just going to they're just going to take it because they're they're not as you know maybe ruthless as they once were and again shout out disney i love you look at all my disney stuff in the back like please i love you don't sue me but yeah i mean in one camp i think i mean i when i saw that clip i couldn't stop laughing i, I it's yeah. it's hilarious because i knew i mean that clip was just going to go incredibly viral and the comments on that clip were hilarious and one comment was this guy's a savage this guy's a baller the next one this guy's a clown this guy's ridiculous the next one Oh, this guy's, you know, the B it's, it's hilarious, you know? So it's, I think it'll be interesting because it doesn't matter. The money doesn't matter to him. So advertisers could leave and he turns that into a win because he's like, well, now anybody can do anything and it's the true freedom of speech and centered towns. That's the thing, you know, you say all you want about Elon. I'm not the biggest fan for sure. But he's definitely right that it's the town center square situation. Like when the open AI Sam Altman thing was happening, like where did it all happen? Freaking Twitter. What what do you think about that that whole situation? You think it was a marketing stunt? You think that letter was real and they actually reached AGI and everybody got scared? And what what do you think? Yeah. Did you see the letter? Oh yeah. That email yeah, I, or whatever. I, I I was tracking the whole thing hyper, hyper specifically. I made a whole blog posts about the whole thing what's your, what's your thoughts about it i think it was a lot of it was just dumb dumb actions the tweets yesterday from from sam i think kind of confirmed that it was just miscommunication the whole time and i think there were certain bits and pieces of these other these other scenarios that did also influence the quote-unquote fuckery that was happening so i mm -hmm. do think that they did have some sort of development that maybe did spook some of the engineers, but did that spark all of this? No, I don't think that's really what sparked all of this. I think the underpinning tones of the individual actors, Adam, Helen, Emmett, and how they all have their and I, they have all their own backgrounds, their own things that they are, you know, that they want and they don't want. And I think it all just kind of broke down into communication. The one thing that blows my mind that still is retained through this whole thing is one of the board members left and went on a plane and was MIA that whatever it was, I think it was that Thursday or Friday night, they were MIA for like eight hours. And that was when theoretically everything was on fire. Like Satya was just being notified and some board member that had to be in and they were just out there which is wild. So I think at the end of the day, if we look at the market and everything, Microsoft is the big winner still, I think from this whole thing. I mean, they gained, they lost, I think 50 billion on Friday on that Friday, but then they gained back 150 billion or something on, and they reach all time highs. Billion? Yeah. Billion, like in one day. Cause their, their companies now, I think what, 2.9 trillion. That's, that's insane. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't know. I know they dropped. I didn't know it was 50 billion. Wow. Well, you know, 1% drop on a $2.7 trillion company now That's is, true. Wow. is, is market moving, you know, GDP moving amounts of money. <laughs> yeah. That's but, insane. Yeah. I think they did turn it into a good marketing stunt because they did release GBD voice and, and turbo kind of all within that, that time frame. Mm. So I think it, they, you know, they played it off as good as they can be. And as a customer, the, the entire time, we were just trying to ensure that the functionality of the platform that we built that was built on top of their platform just didn't go down. Yeah. And that's where I think Microsoft, that's where I really appreciated Satya and Microsoft coming in and just assuring customers that look like, Hey, but you know, big daddy, Microsoft has got everyone's back. If this go, you know, all goes down essentially, like yeah. we will just float the whole thing. That's true. <laughs> just yeah, so I, I, I was kind of, I was kind of worried about too that too to see what happens with with all the platforms using the api yeah. art now that leads into like are, are you guys do you guys have like precautionary backup backup apis yeah just we do in now. Case gpt yeah <laughs> yeah 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 so i mean so we we almost immediately worked on getting our production platform over to azure so it's basically microsoft 
cloned OpenAI's API and it's for Microsoft Azure customers. So uh, what would you rather have a company built upon? A $2.7 trillion public facing company that runs 75% of the world's workforce computer online infrastructure or OpenAI, who just had a fiasco of a firing and we like, yeah. you know, like, what are you going to take? Yeah. So we set up that, that in our background. So if, and when something was ever to happen, we can basically transfer over to those endpoints. And then the platform is entirely, entirely safe and secure. The other answer to your question would be other models. So wow. looking at like Claude and Facebook Llama and some of these other ones on Hugging Face. But where we found out is they're so bad still. Like the quality of these models is actually not even remotely close to what we would want to put into production. If we're comparing them to like 3.5 and 4 Turbo, and I would put Claude 2.1 below 3.5. Wow, that big of a difference. When you're looking at doing function, like the functionality that we are trying to do in terms of creating conversational lead generation, calendar booking, like doing that type of stuff, these other models just can't cut it. Yeah, that that's that makes sense. That that does make sense because we were we had a we had a software where we were we were using it to put together videos easier for mm -hmm. so editors don't have to touch so much. And uh, when this whole fiasco happened, we pretty much went the same route. We were like, "Yeah, yo guys, we need to find an alternative ASAP." I was like, "I mean, who knows?" And then the developer we were working with, he. He was along the same lines, what you were saying, like, Hey, like people talk about them a lot, but it's there, it, there really is no comparison right now. So that's, that's, that's interesting. You said that I'm wow. still waiting to test out Grok. I have my premium account plus or whatever, freaking 16, however much damn money I'm paying a month for Twitter. Now it's ridiculous how that's ha that whole thing's happened. Like now I'm paying for social. It's what, what the fuck? Like I'm paying for social media, but whatever it's a business expense. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think it's. I do think it's worth it. Did you see the new update with, with Twitter where business accounts, verified business accounts, mm -mm. and it's like a few hundred dollars a month that you have to pay, <laughs> but they, they oh guarantee a certain X amount of, of organic views. Plus you can put like, they're trying huh. to add in like a whole like LinkedIn where you can have positions that you're looking for in your company right there embedded in, into the, like oh. the profile and some, let me see if I can find it. Is this it the go is this the yellow checks or gold checks? I'm not sure what color it is, but I know the update <laughs> just came out. Okay. <laughs> and it's, I did see it. Cause I also saw people having like, they're able to have other icons in their bio now or their name, like, like some of the, like some of the guys from the all in pod, they have like the little all in logo next to their Twitter check mark now and i'm like well damn i, I want to i want a little stammer logo next to my like and i think it's because it, it associates you with that other business account okay yeah yeah that's true but yeah i should I, and i need to make a i need to do stammer on twitter that's for sure yeah. yeah i would yeah i would i would have your personal account and the stammer and then just have like building at stammer and then you know so they know the, the typical the typical founder owner bio <laughs> building but no i i do think like I said, like if, if, um, I mean, I, I don't know how, how good your, your copywriting skills is, but like, even if you have a copywriter or something on your team, I would definitely get somebody to, to write threads. We, we have a, we just started up a marketing account for our marketing uh, services and, and we're thinking about onboarding, uh, how to start writing threads and, and, and stuff like that. So definitely a platform worth investing into, I yeah. think. Yeah, definitely. I think we should, I mean, I'll, I posted the first episode that I did of this podcast to Twitter. So I'm down to post on, you know, down to post this one as well. Yeah. No, yeah, that, that'd be awesome. How, uh, what, what's your plans for the podcast? Like, uh, you, you got any, any, any scheduled guests that I might know? No, not yet. It's more of uh there. It's literally, I'm just calling it the Ross Letter John show. Cause I don't know what it is. I just know that I need to consistently sit down and record with folks long form and then upload it. And then we can yeah. all clip it out and do whatever we want to do with it. But I just know that there's opportunity and I have such good, con I mean, this was a great conversation. We have such, I have so many of these with people. I'm like, damn, I wish I re-recorded that. Well, mm -hmm. 
now I'm intentionally trying to do that, uh, uh, on a more, you know, consistent basis. So my goal is to essentially just have do like one to five of these a week, essentially. And then I'm just going to start posting them on my channel. And then it's a, a way for me to have content for my socials. That's doesn't allow, you know, doesn't have me sitting down, having to film content. I can just start getting this stuff clipped up and uh, I've been using Descript a lot lately. Have you been using that one at all? It sounds it sounds familiar. It's the yeah. one where you can upload videos and then it it transcribes it and then you can edit the video like you're editing a document. I have not, but I may have done like a, I may have done a promotion for them because it's, it sounds very familiar. I'm on the website now. It looks yeah. Like so I, I gave them a shot, I think probably, I don't know. And I just started using them again because I was looking for something to help record uh, high quality meetings and they have something called squad cast, but it failed like every other, every other one. But then when you purchase the subscription for squad cast, you also get Descript. So I was like, let me just try Descript. I started using it and it bro, it's insane. You can upload, like basically what I'll do is I'll upload this entire hour and then you can go in and then it has, it, it'll be able to use AI to identify every time we say like, or, and then it will automatically cut those out of the of the entire video and it does it by analyzing the transcription of when you're talking so like it knows when there's no nobody talking because there's no audio and because it's computer it does it way better than if i was to go in and like you know zoom 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 cut you know so and it can do that with words it can do that with uh, empty space it's wild it's been blowing my mind yeah. still learning That's it insane. but that sounds like uh that sounds like a so i i mentioned to my editor a tool that he i i think he still uses it where it does that same feature where it took but this is for short form content it takes mm -hmm. away the and, and all the blank spaces automatically the app is uh captions i'm not sure if you've seen it oh yeah yeah, yeah. i've been using that one yeah so uh, captions does that they even have features where you can up they've been updating it slowly if you go into their discord, you can really see what they're planning to do, but bro, they, they got some automatic B roll footage coming up. AI images autom automatically coming up soon. You'll be able to like to <laughs> edit an entire video, just, just on there and adding B roll motion graphics, a bunch of stuff. They got a lot of, uh, things cook cooking up on, on there. I still use them for quite a bit of, quite a bit of content. I still, I mean, cap, cap cut is still in there too, for me. I actually started going back to editing some of my own videos again because I actually got a green screen. And now I'm in OBS. I started actually using OBS a lot for my short. Mm -hmm. Like when I'm when I'm creating an intentional or a specific video, I'll in OBS I created a 19 by 20, 1920 by 1080 frame. And mm -hmm. then with the green screen, I can then have a window up on my computer that i'm scrolling through and then i'm green screened on top of the video and then i'm recording natively on the computer with my height with my mic so for me and my process of creating creating content rather than doing a bunch of things and then editing back and forth i can just sit down click record film like a six five six minute clip which i can then send to an editor or edit myself really fast because i'm just cutting out my mess ups basically yeah yeah no that's wow that's interesting but then i may have to do the green screen let me let me show you real quick it's pretty cool oh wow that's pretty cool would you get it amazon yeah it's you pretty, got it pretty useful would you get, what would you get at amazon i bought it from elgato actually directly from their website because it was cheaper than amazon dang i may have to experiment with that Wow. Yeah, I got I got the I think the XL one on Black Friday it was it was like a bunch of money off. Yeah, I think the the podcast you mentioned it a bit earlier. I think posting the full clips, the full podcasts on on Twitter would would be would be great. Definitely, they're like I said that they're, they're pushing that long form content. Yeah, pushing that long form content. You just need to make sure that the type so the the copy in your in your tweet or thread with the video is just i would say just as important as youtube with twitter uh -huh. because it, it goes into the seo aspect and it's you know it's letting people know what, what's it about and on twitter they're huge readers so you got to put that into consideration it's 
You don't need like crazy thumbnail. You don't need any thumbnail, really. You just need that title. That title is really got to be uh, captivating. So no, I, I, I think that's great. I, I think a, a good strategy, I would assume would work in your case, would be maybe hopping on calls with, with some, some guys on Twitter with, with, a, with a following. And if you do like a podcast with them, I'm sure they'll just rethread it. I mean, retweet it and then mm-hmm. boom, you know, get them into your, your, your stuff, yeah. have it, have it posted with stammer as well. Are you posting on, on stammer or your personal or both personal personal? Cause I don't know. I don't know what, you know, typically what these conversations might, might have it. I don't know. I'm trying to keep it as open as possible. Cause I know like if I niche down or if I do something too, too specific, it's like, I won't be consistent with it. It needs to just be the, the commonality is just me being the one that's always there. And, and I just know that that's, I've, you know, I've tried to do this so many times, you know, so many different times over the years where I'm like, oh, let's do this together. And it's just, oh, scheduling or whatever. It just doesn't work. So it's like, I just got to do it myself. One of those things if you want it, you know, if you want it done right. I do think you're, you're, yeah, th- that is the most efficient route on, mm-hmm. on creating content is just doing long form and just clipping it up, putting it everywhere. I know when I'm on TikTok now, I'm going to scroll and see, imagine, <laughs> imagine that. <laughs> bunch of accounts of, of of you there you go that'd be cool content there, army there, right yeah content <laughs> army there there's a I, f- I feel like that that's a good reason why sam Sulek blew up on youtube yeah. is is on on tiktok a bunch of people started clipping up his content now he's getting what a million plus views on all his <laughs> youtube videos mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i think i think that's really powerful yeah just one huge funnel yeah yeah well, I'll send you, I'll send you the, the whole recording of it as well. So you can send it to your editors as well. And you can, cl- you know, you can clip it up however you want as well. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, brother, I, I do have here a hard stop here at 315. Yeah. Yeah. Good chat, bro. This is, this is great. We should definitely try to do this again. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Let me know whenever you're on, maybe even a group call with whoever else I'm open to that too. And I was oh also gonna mention to you we we, we got to do that collab video. Oh yes! Oh my gosh, we totally forgot about that. Yes, not Actually, sure what you want it. Yeah, want it about, it. but <laughs> whatever you yeah. want it about, we could definitely do something. Just shoot me over some ideas you got. Okay, maybe all right. Start brainstorming and we take it from there. Yeah, let's do it. Sounds good, brother. Cool. Well, it's always a pleasure, bro. Yeah, I yeah. Likewise, you. happy holidays. If I don't talk to you soon. Likewise, brother. Take all it right. easy. You too. See ya.